week five college football picks against the spread. And I absolutely challenge you to find somebody who on record has documented over 70% last season. And this season we're at 50% and it is time to make that push. Big week coming up, huge spreads and some teeny tiny ones. And of course the game that you absolutely need to avoid. And we're gonna start up with Mississippi State plus 38 and a half at Texas. Yes, you are reading that right, 38 and a half. That is an absolutely insane amount of points, especially when you're gonna have potentially two backup quarterbacks on the field in Arch Manning for Texas and in Michael Van Buren, a true freshman over at Mississippi State. And I got a chance to see that kid play at the Elite 11 last year in Eugene, Oregon. And I actually thought that he was the best quarterback there. And he was better than Dylan Riola that day. Thought he was better than my kid that day. He had an insane day. Now his season last year at St. Francis didn't go as well as expected, but he is on the field for Mississippi State now. So we get a chance to see what the kid can do. Now, Texas absolutely had a monster year last year, but only would have covered this spread one time. And Mississippi State was horrible last year, got off. But they only got beat that bad one single time. And the odds of covering six touchdowns by Texas when Mississippi State will likely pare down this playbook and try to make it easy for a true freshman and increase the amount of times that they run the ball and try to eat up some of the clock, just get first downs. That's what's going to happen. And Michael Van Buren is gonna have an opportunity to submit himself as Mississippi State starter with this game. All right, next game up. Oregon minus 24 at UCLA. And you're like, George, come on, man. This is a lot of points for an Oregon team that has not, except for the last game, put up a huge offensive production. But UCLA is absolutely struggling right now. And Oregon is not the team to get your groove back against. They're not, especially when you can't run the ball. And right now, the Bruins might be the only team in the Big Ten that I wouldn't trust to be able to get 100 rushing yards in a single game. So if the Ducks can get out to an early lead, that means that Ethan Garbers is gonna be in a position where, pardon the pun, he's gonna be a sitting duck in the backfield trying to get the ball off now on the defensive side the bruins have given up 10 touchdowns in their last two games without generating one single turnover so 10 touchdowns no turnovers and now they have to worry about an offense where dylan gabriel is coming in completing 85 percent of his passes and jordan james at running back has three straight games of averaging six plus yards per carry so with all of that said game is in LA give me the duckies next game we got Washington State Cougars plus seven and a half at Boise State now Washington State they might not win this game but they've absolutely shown that they have a multifaceted offense that can keep them in games and their quarterback John Mateer is straight up there with Boise State's Ashton Genty as the best group of five player in the country this year and yes, I called Washington State a G5 team because they got gutted a little bit in the transfer portal and they're playing in a two-team conference. So until things bump up, yes, they have been traditionally a power five school, but this is where we are right now. And Mateer, their quarterback is on pace for a 5,000, 1,000 yard season. 5,000 yards passing, 1,000 yards rushing. And the when you look at the history of that, it hasn't happened too many times. And the dangerous options at wideouts, you got Chris Hudson, Josh Meredith, and Kyle Williams for this team. And I like the Cougs to cover in this game because their biggest vulnerability on defense has been defending the pass. And while Maddox Madsen, he's been solid, I guess, for Boise State, like that's not the Broncos bread and butter. They're averaging 80 more rush yards per game than they are pass yards this season. So Ashton Genty is going to be the focal point. And if Washington State can shut him down, they have a chance to win this football game. Another line that just looked out of whack to me a little bit is Illinois plus 18 at Penn State. 
Now, last year, Luke Altmaier, Illinois' quarterback, he turned the ball over four times against Penn State, and it only resulted in a 17-point Penn State win. And now Altmaier has been the Big Ten's most improved player so far through four games because the Illini are 4-0. And that included that road win last week in Lincoln against Nebraska. Now, I'm betting on the fact that there is no way that a quarterback that is playing his best football is going to duplicate the worst performance of his entire career just because you roll a, a white helmet with a blue stripe down the middle. I'm not buying it. And if you know me, and if you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, you know that my confidence in Drew Aller, it dips quite a bit against any semi-capable defense. And even with four extra possessions in last year's win over Illinois, Aller didn't even have a touchdown pass. And when I've watched Aller this year, yes, he has improved, but outside of West Virginia, who have they really played? They played a close game in Penn State against Bowling Green and it was Penn State's run game that was doing all the damage and it wasn't their pass game. Now, I hope, I hope this, I hope that Brett Bielema, Illinois' head coach, is paying attention because I think, based upon a conversation that I had a couple years ago, that I think that he thinks that I'm a hater and I am taking his team and the points in this one. So listen up, Brett, listen up, you Illinois fans. This is for you, baby. Do not let your boy down. And now, my lock of the week. Oh, yes, baby. We are three and one on the season in locks of the week. And this time, it is Minnesota at Michigan, minus nine points. And you're like, hold up, George. These are two rock fight offenses. Yes, you are 100% right. But Minnesota brings one of the best pass defenses in Ann Arbor this weekend. But that's like bringing a leather jacket to a sauna. What the hell do you need that for? Because Michigan ain't going to throw the ball anyway. Uh, this not going to happen, particularly if Alex Orgy is back there at quarterback again. Now, Iowa, who has a mediocre pass offense as well, they didn't throw the ball. And Iowa saw that Minnesota came in with seven interceptions in their first three games and said, intercept this because they ran the ball 45 times for 272 yards and four touchdowns. Hmm, I wonder where I've seen that for. Yes, last week against USC, what, 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 46 for 290 for Michigan? So you know how they're going to play this game. And it'll be fascinating to see what Minnesota's head coach, PJ Fleck, and the defensive coordinator, uh, Corey Heatherman, what they're able to try and cook up to contain a Wolverine squad almost 300 yards up on the ground last week and uh most of that came in the first half now if they couldn't do it against iowa what makes me believe that minnesota is going and then mind you they got blown off the out the window by iowa who has no pass offense to to speak of they threw for under 100 yards last week and minnesota has lost their last four big 10 games by an average of 21 and the Gophers went one and four on the road last season. And this one almost seems like it's too easy at this point. So give me the Wolverines. And if you're into prop bets, UCF's running back RJ Harvey is on a six game streak of 120 yards plus rushing. And this week's opponent, <laughs> you know who it is. It is Colorado. So make sure that you take the over. I don't care what the over is. Make sure that you take it. And the game that you need to stay away from this week. Oh my gosh. It is Oklahoma minus two and a half at Auburn. Stay away from this game. We got a true freshman making his first start at Oklahoma, Michael Hawkins. He did a good job when he came in against Tennessee, even though that they ended up losing the game because he replaced Oklahoma's Jackson Arnold. So that's the first thing. And Auburn's quarterback situation. Yes, they went back to Peyton Thorne after benching him, but we don't know how this is going to play out. And Hugh Freeze has been throwing quarterbacks under the bus, backing it up and running them over. Then he threw Sam Pittman in Arkansas, who beat his team last week under the bus saying, listen, it, I know I respect Sam Pittman, but if we played them nine more times, that'll make 10 and we'll win all nine of them. 
Well, it don't matter. <laughs> you don't get to play 10 games. You get one, foul. You get one. So I'm staying far away from this game when it comes to a bet.